Yes, I'm doing the Obsidian video finally. So I've been trying to write a book for my family tree, for my family. And I've been chipping away for the last few months, but I just wanted to share with you how I'm using Obsidian to do this. And because this is kind of the first time I've systemized my Obsidian vault with a variety of different plugins, I figured I could share some of my most used ones and why I like them so much. You'll notice that I'm using a Windows 98 edition theme. And actually, when I saw this theme in the themes list, it made me want to write this book in Obsidian. But I had one problem, and it is the reason why I wasn't using Obsidian to write this book in the first place. I needed a way to export my markdown files into a neat PDF. The problem was, is that when you go to any page, and you export to PDF. There are options to customize that PDF, but it still wasn't up to my standards. Let me give you an example of the same page. So you can customize it so that it has some type of margin, but for the most part, it looks like this. And what I really wanted was something that looked like this. And the only way I was going to achieve this was with a plugin. And that plugin is called Obsidian Pandoc. It's called Pandoc and it's kind of a two-step process. First, you have to actually install Pandoc and then install this plugin. Let's go back to that page, go to my command palette. After installing the plugin, you get a ton of different options to export to, like EPUBs. I'm using the PDF via LaTeX and I do have a little hotkey for it. So the only thing that might be annoying for some people is not everything is going to transfer into this PDF style. You know, you can't export fancy plugins or anything, which I'm totally not using anyway. I have folders set up, which I usually don't have in Obsidian. Normally I just use files and tags, but I have a book folder, of course, has all the different sections or parts in the book. All of those parts are accompanied by a PDF preview. And I can keep updating these PDFs as I'm writing in Markdown. So I can keep checking in back and forth to see what's compatible and what isn't. In every one of these parts, or I'm calling them chapters by my metadata at the top of the page, and you can create metadata between the three dashes like this. And I have my tags for chapter. Now, one thing I want to show you uh, that I actually discovered recently, weirdly enough, uh, I don't know why it took me so long to find this out. You can nest tags. This is now going to be a tag called part and chapter will be nested inside. Now, another plugin I suggest using if you are using a lot of tags is Tag Wrangler. This is one that I installed pretty recently. This is going to allow you, upon right-clicking on any of your tags, a menu. So you can rename tags, and this is really what I use it for the most. And when you rename this tag, it will update everywhere in the vault. So you can rename chapter, for instance, to part slash chapter. So I don't have to go to every single page that says chapter and change it. Okay. Go to any other page and I'll see it there. And in every page, I have two types of links. I have people that I'm linking and I have sources. All of my sources are linked at the bottom of the page via footnotes like this. A plugin I use a lot is footnote shortcut. And that simply allows you to create a hotkey that will automate the footnoting process. So if you're not already aware of how markdown footnotes work, it's open, close bracket inside, you have a carrot and the number. And then down below, the number and a colon. And this is the content of the footnote. Going to preview, it looks like this. And you can link back and forth. I'd rather automate this a little bit and that's what that uh, footnote shortcut plugin will do for you. So my hotkey is command shift six, just like that. And this will be the title of that source. So let's just say title of source. And I would link this. So highlight link. And then I'd say, see whatever the ID of this source would be. 
maybe it's S1. So I'm telling the reader to see S1 in the index. What I'm going to do every time I link a source and a person, but we're working with sources here, I'm going to send this to my index page. But my limitation are these PDFs. So let's take a look at one of the parts sources index and every part or every family in this book has its own index. So when I tell the reader CS1 or CS17, I'm telling them to go to this index for this family and go to that ID number. And if I were to go back up, there is a PDF for that source as well. So this is what it would look like. So first thing I would do is go into my source. Like I showed you before, you have three dashes at the top and then another three dashes and all of your metadata inside. I have a template for this. So I'm going to the command palette um, and I'm gonna go to templates and I'm using a plugin called Templater. New source, it'll give me all the metadata I need. First is my tags, source. So this metadata is hidden. The only thing you'll see of course is the tags. So. What I want to do is extract all of this metadata, put it into the body of my page here. I don't want to retype it though. So I have another template that takes this body source and takes all of my front matter or my metadata and puts it into the body of the page. From here, I can extract everything in the body of this page to my source index. In this example, index for PDF. So I'll just highlight all this right click and extract current selection and go to index and it creates a link for me and there it is so let me show you how all of this works on the back end i installed the templater plugin which is a very popular plugin that is definitely a must-have when you're using obsidian templater it's going to sort of be an upgrade to the native template structure in Obsidian. And I highly recommend looking at the complete documentation here and getting a handle of how some of the commands work. You can also use JavaScript. Um, and I'm gonna show you some of mine. So let's look at the new source. This one is pretty straightforward. It's just a skeleton for the metadata. Now my body source is taking from that and let me just put this side by side. Here are some of those templater commands. In that header, I have the file's title just by typing tp.file.title. That is one of the commands. I can also get the metadata, so the front matter. And I can get the ID, and I just have that in inline code ticks. Then I have the type, grabbing the type, the year, the address, the household, and that's it. So. Not only do I want to put it into the body of the page and extract it to the index, I want to move that page automatically to sources. I want to put it right into this folder. So inside of my template, I can add this. At the very bottom, I can put this command. So it's just moving to sources slash and then the file of the title. If you're unaware of how Obsidian links work, it basically looks like this folder slash file, just like those tags, that part slash chapter. Part would be the folder, chapter, the file. Now I can try this out again. Example file, go back here, go to my templates, which I do have a hotkey for, and body source. Okay, now I should be able to see this file inside of my sources folder which I do. And then I will check to see if everything is accurate here. And again, I would send to index for PDF by right clicking and extracting current selection. So there's one more plugin here. It's called Note Composer, I believe. Let me just delete this. And that's giving me this link to whatever I'm extracting that text to. Let's go to that one, Note Composer. You have two options. You can link to new file or embed new file. 
and embedding the new file will just be seeing a window into the file that you sent the text to. I can also create an index through data view, which is probably something you would prefer doing over this. And let's create a quick data view index right now. So this is a plugin called data view. And this is also an extremely powerful plugin. And I'm not even like touching the surface of what this can do. Might even make a video. Let me know if you want me to. But essentially what data view does is take all of that metadata at the top of any page and puts it into a table. So let me give you an example of a table that already exists in my sources. It's giving me all the sources I have, taking that year front matter and the type, and I'm also sorting by year. It just gave me this nice table and I can click to any one of these links. So inside this data view index, let's collect three ticks, data view, three ticks down here, table. You can also create a list. Let's say year as year. So I'm saying every instance of year, lowercase, have it show with year capitalized. Also, I wanna see the type and type as type. From the tag source, every page with that tag, and I'm gonna sort by year ascending. And that's it. When I hit preview, it should show up. And this is a great way to incorporate databases into a markdown program, which is brilliant. Like I said, there's so much more you could do here and I've actually watched a good amount of YouTube videos on data view. I may, if I can remember, link to them down in the description. I could also make more videos about this. I do have hotkeys to trigger a lot of these plugin features and in settings, there is a really impressive list of things that you can add shortcut keys to. Here are some other plugins that I use quite a bit. Advanced tables. This one is just like the footnote shortcut where you're making writing and markdown a lot quicker. With this plugin, I can say pipe, title, tab, title, tab, enter. So it just makes the process quicker. Also, there are formulas that you can use on these tables and there is documentation for that. I think the only one I used was calculating the sum of a column. So if I had numbers down a column, I could see the total at the end and it would calculate for me. I do wanna look more into that though, but it's not something that I need for this setup. Another plugin I use is Admonition. Let's go over to my checklist for this video actually. And I do use it in here. It's a lot like a call out if you use Notion. I think this would be really, really beneficial for note taking. People who like this visual component to their notes. When you install the plugin, you will have an option in your command palette to insert an admonition type. And you can also, of course, create a hotkey for it, like warning, and insert it and start writing inside. In preview, it'll look like this. Another plugin that I can't fail to mention is Dictionary. This is one that is of course extremely necessary if you're writing in Obsidian. And it has a lot of features to it. It's not just checking your spelling. It's also giving you synonym suggestions, which I probably use more than anything else. And a nice little sidebar for more information about the word that you're looking up definition, the origin, even a pronunciation audio clip. I think I'm gonna leave it at that, but before I go, I'm gonna open up my graph here. Whenever I use programs like this, I'm not much of a graph person. I like the idea of it, but I never end up using it. So for this, what I really do enjoy though, is the ability to group. So you'll notice that there's different colors for different tags. And there's a lot of options here for filters groups, how it's displayed, line thickness, forces, which I use a lot, link force. What intrigued me the most were the groups. I can group by tag, like I am doing right here, tagging the members, tagging all of the pages with the source tag, and then chapter read, of course. We changed that to part slash chapter. 
not all of those will be red. So these kind of act or they should act as the center forces of a lot of these links around them. And if I mess more with these forces, it should look like that's the case. And it kind of does. Of all the programs with graphs, I gotta say Obsidian definitely takes first place. I haven't used Remnode in a while, but I remember not liking it so much when I was using it. Anyway, that's about it. I just wanted to share with you some of the plugins I'm using right now for this project. And let's go right into the outro. I'm gonna leave an article in the description, which is sort of a companion piece to this video. Um, and it's just a list of all of my favorite plugins right now. Other than that, I will see you guys the rest of the week on Twitter and next time with a new video. I'll see you then.